during the early 1700s says that a feared and brutal Irish warlord, Arbitach, ruled over a small region of Ireland which is believed to include it, the town of Garfach. <laughs> Today in Creepy History, we'll be discussing the Arbitoc, Ireland's vampire. Hey Wolfpack, welcome back to another Creepy Cryptid History. So, this one right here is actually by Fax Base, and it's called the Arbitoc, the vampire more terrifying than Dracula. So make sure you go on YouTube and give Fax Base a like, okay? Give them a subscribe too, all right? Hello, everybody. Fax Base here with Arbitoc, the vampire more terrifying than Dracula. By now, we all know that Dracula is considered to be the go-to inspiration for modern vampire horror stories and films. Dracula is Bram Stoker's legendary vampire made famous by his espitalary novel of the same name. Some believe that the scary vampire was inspired by the bloodthirsty Vlad the Impaler, or perhaps even the serial killer, Elizabeth Bathory. But there are many who disagree. This is because of the widespread belief that Stoker's inspiration came from an even more terrifying source than the Impaler or Bathory could ever have been. Stoker also studied in Ireland for a long time, which lends weight to this theory. The vampire story as told by Dr. Jeffrey Keating during the early 1700s says that a feared and brutal Irish warlord, Arbitach, ruled over a small region of Ireland which is believed to included the town of Garfach. The tale was later collected by a folklorist and historian Patrick Weston Joyce in the late 1800s, which means the story would have been spreading at the time that Bram Stoker found himself in the country. Arbitach made sure that no one stepped out of line with the use of sheer intimidation, and if that didn't work, he definitely wasn't opposed to bloodshed. Those who cowered under his rule believed that the evil spirits possessed him and bestowed him with magical, albeit terrifying powers. It seemed that these powers also made up for his stature, as Arbitach was described as a deformed dwarf in some accounts. Finally, the townsfolk couldn't stand it anymore. They were too scared to leave their dwellings for fear of irritating Arbitach and being put to death. This led them to conjure up a devious plan. Together with neighboring chieftain Cathane, they would take on Arbitach and kill him. This is exactly what they did. Sighing in relief, the townsfolk retreated to their homes after Arbitach, certain that they would now be able to live in peace. They had sealed Arbitach inside a tomb in a standing position, as was tradition at the time. Another variation of the story says that Arbitach had a wife, but became jealous and possessive of her and suspected that she was having an affair. Climbing up to their bedroom window from the outside, determined to catch her in the act, he slipped and fell to his death, after which he was buried in an upright position. Little did the townspeople know that the true horror was only getting started. Arbitach rose from the dead as a vampire, not only in a quest to become one of the most frightening mythological creatures in Irish history, but to extract revenge on those who took his life. Arbitach immediately demanded bowls of blood from the residents of the small town, which required them to cut their wrists and pool the blood in bowls. This was meant to sustain his newly minted undead energy, and the situation was soon out of control. This process happened on a daily basis to ensure the vampire stayed content, but the townspeople soon approached Cathane again, who in turn, again, Slade Arbitach. But still, death could not hold the terrifying ruler. He rose from the dead yet again, when Cathane killed him a third time, only for Arbitach to defy the Grim Reaper once again. He called for reinforcements. 
Cathane was advised by those experienced in dark magic that the only way to get Arbitok to cross over, or go downwards, is to kill him with a sword constructed of yew wood. Furthermore, the vampire had to be buried upside down and covered with a barrier of thorns and a massive stone. Cathane did exactly this, and finally Arbitok stayed dead, or undead, as it may be. But that was only the beginning of the monster's legacy. Known today as Ireland's Vampire King, his last resting place can still be found a few miles west of Garva, where a lone hawthorn tree stands atop a hill overlooking quarried stone. It wouldn't do to try and move the stone at all, as the ancient magicians warned Cathane at the time that if anyone disturbed the stone, Arbitok would be released once again and would wreak more havoc than ever before. And it seems that Arbitok can still wield some dark power from underneath the ground anyway. Around 25 years ago, an attempt was made to clear the site on which his grave lies. When workers fired up a chainsaw to cut down the hawthorn tree, it inexplicably broke down three times. Disturbed, but not discouraged, they decided to tackle the grave itself and try to remove the stone. They wrapped a thick chain around it and were pulling backwards when it suddenly snapped and cut one of the workers' hands. The cut was deep enough for blood to spill on the ground, surrounding the stone and the workers watched in terror as the blood was seemingly sucked into the ground. Needless to say, no further attempts were made to clear the land that holds the grave of the world's most terrifying vampire. Man, that was creepy. I really enjoyed that vampire tale. What did you think, though? Was it a real vampire, or is it just simply folklore in Irish history? Well, I hope you liked today's creepy cryptid history. Also, I want to give a shout out to all of the members of the channel. I know I keep forgetting to do that on, on these little short cryptid videos. Until the next time, guys. Bye!